Migration in its simplest form is when a person or group changes where they live. This could be a move from one village, town, or city to another in the same country, but it could also be an international movement from one country to another. However, when migration occurs, there is a ripple effect that affects people who are not involved in migration. In this video, we're going to focus on some of these effects in migrant origin locations or countries, that is, the places where migrants come from. Talking about migration effects is tricky for a few reasons. These results firstly can be observed at different levels and time periods. We will discuss how mobility can have micro-level effects, for example, on the immediate family members and households that an immigrant leaves from. On the other end of the spectrum, we'll talk about effects at the country or regional level, which are also referred to as macro-level effects. We can also see effects at the community level in areas where migrants come from. This video is not meant to give an exhaustive list of all of the effects migration can have on a country or place of migrant origin, but to give a general overview of the most common mechanisms and effects of migration in the country or place of origin. In this video, we will refer to the ways that migration creates effects as mechanisms. These are typical characteristics or components of migration that directly lead to observed effects in origin locations. There are a number of mechanisms through which migration can affect those who stay behind in their country or place of origin. One of the most common ways in which migration can have effects is through remittances, which is the money that migrants send back to their family, friends, or communities of origin. Another way effects can be manifested is through social remittances, or the norms, values, and knowledge transfer sent back to families, friends, and communities of origin. These transfers can also be made by the networks or relationships that can be facilitated between the country of origin and destination by the migrants or diaspora groups. Another way that migration can manifest effects on the country of origin is by the absence of the person themselves. While these mechanisms can create effects at the country, community, and individual levels, the actual effects generated can vary and can be both positive and negative. Let's start by looking at some individual or household level effects and work our way up to the country or macro effects. At the individual or household level, some of the most common effects of migration are on poverty, living standards, education of children, and health outcomes and access to health care of household members who stay behind. Remittances sent to households can help to move these remittance receiving families out of economic poverty, allowing them to have better living standards, send their children to school because they can pay the school fees or don't need the children to work, and can pay for medical care and buy better food, resulting in better nutritional outcomes. The majority of research shows that migration has a positive effect in all of these areas, but that does not mean this is always the case. For migration to have a positive effect, it often matters where the migrant goes, if they're able to send back money, and if they keep ties with their families in the country of origin. For example, a study in Nicaragua showed that the positive effect of migration on the well-being of the household who stayed behind was more pronounced when the migrant was able to move to the United States compared to moving to Costa Rica. The study uncovered that while migration affects poverty, poverty can also shape migration trends. Migrants traveling to Costa Rica generally had lower education levels, were younger, poorer, and came from rural areas. Migrants bound for the United States were considerably more educated and thus had a good shot of making it in their destination. The physical absence of a household member is another important mechanism through which migration can affect those who stay behind. This is particularly manifested when the person that leaves was a caregiver in the household. The way children in particular spend their time can change when a household member leaves because there may be more immediate need for children to step up and complete household duties, or even work for wages, possibly instead of attending school. There may also be less oversight of children in a household due to migration, which could have effects on their physical and mental health, as well as school attendance and performance. However, a study in El Salvador found that child schooling in general did not suffer if 
they were receiving remittance payments. Evidence in this area is very mixed and often depends on the specific situation. As with households, remittance receipt at the national level comes with a multitude of benefits related to economic stimulus and even boosting a country's creditworthiness. In fact, remittances may be one of the most widely observed and studied results of migration for origin countries and the households within them. While cash from abroad can be a welcome source of income in many cases and have many positive effects on a country's creditworthiness and balance of payment statistics, this benefit must be weighed against negative consequences like the possibility of less labor market participation. For example, a 2019 study on remittance effects from 2001 to 2011 in Nepal actually found a negative association between remittances and labor market participation, meaning that people receiving remittances were less likely to work for wages. However, there were gender differences with these effects. While women were generally observed to be engaging in more self-employment, men on the other hand were seen to be increasing their leisure time. This is an example of what economists call moral hazard. Besides the direct effects of remittances on labor supply and macro-fiscal benefits to a country, migration can also affect wages and alleviate unemployment pressures. Proponents of emigration will argue that if more people leave a country, the resulting smaller workforce will generate higher wages and take pressure off of possible high unemployment figures. In 2004, when a wave of migration from Eastern Europe to the UK and Ireland occurred, Benjamin Elsner investigated how this affected wages in origin countries, particularly in Lithuania. This migration actually drove wages up by about 6% in Lithuania, although this affected young workers more than older workers. While there are clearly positive effects of emigration, such waves of departures can be controversial. Some will argue that if too many highly skilled people leave a country, the national level of human capital will decrease. Dozy OK tested this idea in 23 sub-Saharan African countries and found a decrease in skilled labor for 22 of them resulting from emigration. However, Another Sub-Saharan African study conducted by Julia Bredman and her team uncovered that those same highly skilled immigrants typically sent more remittance money back to their origin countries compared to lower skilled migrants. This helped to, to cancel out any losses from emigration. Finally, origin countries often see effects resulting from transnational ties. That is, the relationship origin states maintain with their emigrant populations can result in knowledge sharing, capacity building, or even in some cases, conflicts between the populations in destination and origin locations. Be sure to check out my explainer video on diasporas for more on this topic. That's a general introduction to migration effects in origin countries, although by no means a complete list. In other videos, I'll be looking more closely at examples of migration effects on the channel, so be sure to check back for those. Be on the lookout for the next video where we look at the effects of migration on destination countries. I hope you give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment about migration effects you've experienced or witnessed. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you can stay up to date with new videos. I'll see you next time.